Okay, we have to come back. We have to come back in order to have a better a better video and uh, a better video and audio. Okay, very very important. So we're just trying to get the best we can get. I was meant to understand that the previous one was uh, echoing and we said okay let us uh, see if we can come out better. So we So we want to talk about Russian interest and the survival of the Nigerian state. Okay, mm, I think somebody said good now. Okay. Um, so I want to say good evening, um, good morning. Good afternoon to some of us. I am Mazichika Austin, and uh, we are here once again to talk about developmental issues. Um, very, very important. We want to talk about developing issues as they are evolving things we need to understand, things we need to know. Because it is our own responsibility to make a consistent analysis on issues as they evolve. Very, very important. And that is why we want to talk about evolving shows, evolving stories. And I believe my voice is coming out loud and clear. I mean, my voice, my, the video, I believe they are all coming out loud and clear because we have a couple of things to talk about. Excuse me. We have a couple of things to talk about. So I will urge us to share this program. Very, very important. Everyone has to listening to it people need to people need to know about it because it's an area that you don't have much people talking about it especially on mainstream on nigerian mainstream media people tend not to talk much about it and we own it as a responsibility to tell ourselves exactly what is going on very, very important to understand that. Okay, thank you, Tony. I had to go off and uh, come back. So please help us to share this program. That is all you can do for us. Share it to the groups. Share it to everywhere. Let people understand the current development, the current trajectory, so that people can as well have a broader mind and mindful of enlightenment so we we are talking about russian interest what russian interests appears to be in nigerian space very very important you see it's important we talk about it because it is our responsibility to educate ourselves no one else can educate us better than the one we do ourselves and that is why we are taking it as a responsibility to interpret certain evolving issues 
so that you and I cannot be, you know, in the dark without understanding things that are taking place, without understanding the happenings of the day. Very, very important. And that's why I said we have to share this program. You see, uh, recently there came an ongoing 10 days protest, which I think today should be the fourth day. And uh, certain devices were put up by the organizers and the sponsors of the protest. The protest is meant to last for 10 days. And prior to this time, we, we have been letting us, you know, to understand geopolitics. We have been, before now, it has been our business to inform us about geopolitics, how it works, its nature, its tomb, and its features. You see, people never appreciated that because sometimes people want to appreciate what is what has come to their doorstep. You know, people want to start recognizing issues when it has approached their doorstep, which is a very bad one. But we try as much as possible to forewarn you, to pre-inform you about where everything is going to land. Some persons try to mock us. Some person said we are wasting our time talking about geopolitics, talking about international developments. Some person said uh, we are not being their friend enough, you know, for letting our people to understand this important aspect of what we are doing. Some people try to mock us, some people try to make caricature of us. But it never bothered us because we, we know what we are doing. It's a conscious position we have taken. It's a position we have taken, devoid of how people feel, how you interpret it. Because we understand that if we check it out from on that perspective, if we check it out on that front, a lot of things are going to happen. And thank God today, I think we have a very reasonable number of conscious people amongst us. People who have, you know, been attuned with international development. If anybody should make a mistake to think we are naive about global politics, I think the person is far from the truth because our years of, you know, pushing on this front line, our years of, you know, letting our people understand the nature of international politics, its features, its dynamics, have really awakened a lot of souls, especially on our platform. We have maximized extensively on that. And today, every single thing we, are, we, 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 we predicted, every single thing we, you know, we said, we forewarned ourselves, they are all playing before us. When we try to tell people that uh, eventually Nigeria is going to be a grant for Cold War, a grant for Korean Peninsula, we have been using this word earlier before now. Uh, uh, Pakachas, welcome. Now, we have been using some of these terms earlier before, now, even when the indices were not there. You know, and today they are all playing out. They are all playing out. If there's any mistake anybody can make, it's for anybody to think that Nigeria have not instigated consciously or unconsciously Nigeria has worked herself into a grant for superpowers contention yes Nigeria knowingly or unknowingly 
have stepped into a ground for Cold War, a ground for interest conflict. And the era we are now is an era of extreme carefulness. It calls for very, very carefulness, calculative position, strategic, you know, incursions, and whatever. Very, very important to understand that. Because what we have been yearning for, what we have been praying for, is just before us. Let me tell you something, and I want you to understand this. It will be difficult for Biafra to come. Except there is a spark or superpowers interest in Nigeria. And that's what I meant when I said Korean Peninsula. People do not understand. Let me explain that because I have a lot of things we want to talk, want to extensively discuss on Russian interest in Nigeria, the reaction of the Nigerian government and the possible ground everything is going to land. But whenever we talk about Korean Peninsula, the, the South and North Korea, for those of you who are watching from Asia, they were able to be separated because two powers, two powers with an equal power potential, were able to contend on the two sides. The West was supporting South Korea while the defunct USSR, or should I say the Eastern Bloc, was supporting the North Korea. And when they fought and fought, and it was not easy for any part to, any side to get winning, they signed what we call armistice. They reached a compromise that separated the entity. So, I might, I might be right or wrong, but the truth remains, this is what I think. It will be very difficult for the Biafran project to be realized. In absence of having a, a situation or an environment where, where superpowers started contending in Nigeria, and that is where we have entered. That is where it is. That is officially marked out for the past two days. That ground was established. So we have a lot of things, like I said, to discuss. And very, very important, while we talk, you have to be broadened. You have to, you know, live, you know be liberal in mind. You see, most of you do not understand why leadership is pushing us to step up in mind because every agitation has its stages of development. Mind you, you need to share this program. People need to hear this. Share, make use of the sharing button. Share, people need to hear. Now, every agitation or every project has stages. That is just what it is. Every stage have every project have stages of development. What some people might call stratifications, strata, layers upon layers. So it is an agitation. We have created awareness. We have popularized the pro uh, vision. It is now is the era of playing international politics. But if you are not critical and sensitive, you will be wasting your time still talking about awareness campaign when the era has gone. This is era we need a strategic positioning. And the era of strategic positioning engagement, relationship building is an era of less noise and the more secret connections.
I repeat, the era of engagement is an era of you talk less, but secretly you build up your networks. And that's why most of you who still have within their mindset that we are still doing awareness campaign era, always have an issue. When they are not hearing anything from the leadership, they start agitating, they start panicking. That's not the era you are. This era of conducting of relationship. And for you to be successful in relationship conduction, conduction or conduct, you must have the maturity to engage even when people are sleeping. You are engaging. When people are snoring, you are meeting, you are reaching out, you are signing deals, you are closing deals. It's not an era of noise. Because if you don't understand this, you will have a whole lot of, you will mess your vision. Because the era we are is the era you share intelligence. There are certain allies, friends that have more access, assets to catch up intelligence. They get those intelligence gathering, they share to you. And the intelligence information that were disposed to you are not for you to come and use it and do like program. For those of you who sometimes assume that leadership is not talking. Certain intelligence require silent action. Silent proaction. You quietly dislodge. You quietly implement. You quiet, people now see words. Because we must understand what it is. Certain intelligence that are being shared to you by your allies, you cannot source it on your own. You don't have the resources to source such intelligence. You don't have the technology to source it. You have, don't have the human resources to penetrate those circles. You don't have it. But your allies will source them and give it to you. So when they give it to you and you turn it to a joke, or something for live broadcast, or something you come and start dancing on camera, you lose them, you lose them. So this is the era that we must understand the tenets of politics, especially international politics and engagement. We must. So when intelligence arises, is expected to be utilized. Active utilization. Not noise, not chagrins, not children display. Now, before we go today, remember everything we are talking today is Russian, Russian uh, interest in Nigeria. Now, let me give you instance. Leadership came up recently and said to us, when the organizers of the protest were, you know, at the early stage of them organizing it, IPOB leadership came and said, we are not interested for that. Immediately they said it. The governors in the East lined up because they know that it takes the position of it, the position of IPOB is sacrosanct. The governors know it. The politicians in eastern Nigeria are aware. The politicians in Biafra and they are aware. All of them started making a press statement in line with that position. It was IPOB that fronted that position. And they, all of them felt in into that line. Majority of them fell into that line without even knowing the reason why IPOB stood on that ground. If you ask some of them why, if you ask the governors or the politicians 
Why did you not support the protest? You will not say any reasonable reason. If you ask the likes of Omar, he will tell you because he's, he's an APC minister. And that is not. You cannot convince an Igbo man that because Somahi is an APC minister, that was why they listened to him not to protest. That is a feeble reason to an average Igbo man. If you ask uh, others, they will tell you they have no reason. The only person who told the line of reason that the leadership of IPOB gave was Deputy Speaker of House of Rep. That is Carlo. I think Benjamin Carlo or something like that. He said he gave the same position I gave because he knows that anything contradicting the narrative the leadership pushed will make him look funny. Nobody will take him serious. Now, let me tell you, because the leadership got an intelligence from our friends of a conspiracy to unleash hell on us, the enemy, our enemies have tried to use that opportunity to destroy our life, to destroy our property. Dear boy, creating a war between our people and the Yorubas. The leadership got the intelligence. The intelligence was shared to the leadership. And the leadership swept into action. Analyzed the whole situation and noticed that the best way to save our people is to ask them to distance themselves from the protest. Because the plan of the actors was to seize the opportunity, destroy, burn a whole lot of our businesses, kill our people as much as they can. They'll be killing in Biafran land, they will be destroying in other places. Then, instigating rift between us and the Yorubans, probably create conflict or crisis, then they will have an upper hand to come within the circle of political arena and start governing. The leadership got the enter and deflated it. Did you see their reaction? They began to rant. They were mad at that decision because they understood how that singular action mesmerized everything. And if you listen to what Tunubu, the press statement, he made, <laughs> he indirectly gave an accolade because to him, he knows in fact, the intelligence within his circle has also told him that the reason why the protest is not making a lot of wave is because Ndibo are not interested. Because it is the, it is the Ndibo. Ndibo are the only people who have, if they are out for a protest, they put their resources, they put their time. They will be funding every gathering. You don't need to talk about fundraising. They will fund it. They have the resources. They have the capability. Their use will mobilize resources and achieve the end. So if you listen to his press statement, you will also see he was even lashing at his people and uh, all the rest of them who are trying to, you know, do the xenophobia and the homophobia nonsense. So we must be intelligent as a people it is it is our responsibility to be smart we must so we that is a kind of 
prelude. Let's go to the <coughs> discussion of the moment, the topic of the day, which we are talking about Russian interest. Everybody, you know, everybody tends to be panicking. There is a serious panic in Abuja over Russian flag, which you can see the sticker below. Everybody is talking about that. I have read extensively different reactions from those in Nigeria Institute, Institute of Foreign Affairs, I think in Victoria Island. I was once, uh, I once visited that place, that institute in VI, yes, Nigeria Institute of International Studies or something like that, or something like that. I think there was a time I visited to be a fellow, you know. Uh, a failure in that institute. So I have read the reaction of a lot of professors in that. I have also read extensively uh, what present and past diplomats are talking about. Uh, the Russian flag that is really making waves in the north. And I can summarize it and tell you that uh, there is a serious panic. There is a serious panic. In Asorok, everybody is panicking. But for us, the Biafran people, is not worrisome to us because we have been analyzing the trajectory. We have been, you know, making an inference. We have been predicting where everything is going to be. And people do not tend to take us serious because, you know, trust it. Uh, trust them. We we are conspiracy theorists. Yes, that is how the best way they describe us in most cases. Remember, you have to share this program. So, today, every single thing we, we forewarned, every single thing we predicted is, not, is playing out. It's absolutely playing out. We told you <laughs> that the North will eventually seek for exit. I know people are still complaining on that. It's going to happen. We told you that Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, they are reason for forming a confederation is to contend in Nigeria. You people, nobody believed that. And that they are play, the, the whole thing is playing out. But let me tell you something. Every country in the world, every country in the world, no country in the world allows any ideology to start. I know why I'm taking time to talk so that you digest every single thing we are talking about. No country in the world, I repeat, allows any event that is any opposing event to start. Do you know why you don't allow it to start? You don't allow it to start because immediately it starts. It is difficult to miss it. Any ideology that starts becomes problematic to stop. That is why countries, responsible governments all over the world do not even want any opposing idea to start. Because you can't stop it. Why did I say this? What you are seeing is not the Russian flags and all the rest of them. It's just an introduction to what is to come. Yes, it's just an introduction to what is to come. And somehow, the whole thing is going to be bigger for Nigeria to stop. Now, let me tell you, there was a program I made somewhere some time ago, and I told you that, to be honest, Nigeria started a trouble for herself. Nigeria started a trouble for herself. How? How do I mean? I know 
as I'm saying, members of any national intelligence agency, they are listening. The Department of State Service, they are listening. And I know a lot of interest parties are listening. So we, we are informing because I know everything we said, they take time to digest it. But, you know, there are certain things we cannot stop. Especially when there is a, a policy blunder, when there is a policy disaster, we suffer it. Now, how did Nigeria started all this trouble thing? How did Nigeria called for the bee that is going to stink her? It's simple. Those of them in Europe sat down. Those of them in Western Europe sat down, especially the NATO group. And they said, we want to destroy Russia. We want to annihilate Russia. The conspiracy was to destroy an outright destruction of Russia. And of course, they want to destroy Russia and they steal away Russian resources. Because Russia is so much blessed with resources that the Western oligarchs, the Western elites, wanted to enter into Russia, subjugate the Russian people, and steal their resources. That's what they do. They ponder and loot. And Russia said no. You can't do this to us. In Ukraine, you have successfully you went to Ukraine and took everything. You are controlling everything in Ukraine. You are also doing it in other countries, neighboring countries. That is your business. But for us, you cannot plunder us. And do you know what they said? They said, okay. Hence, your proving stubborn. We are going to destroy your energy sector. Be friends, listen so that you understand global politics. You see, when some people say, eh, we are analyzing Russia, we are analyzing US, we laugh. Why do we laugh? It's because such limitations of their brain cannot take us anywhere. We, because Biafran question is a geopolitics, it's a geopolitical conflict. And if you don't understand the nature, you keep on fooling yourself. You keep on fooling yourself. It's purely geopolitical issue. So they said, okay, we want to, hence you have decided not to give us access to your resources. Hence you have decided not to, in fact, as a matter of fact, do you know what they did? They first of all deceived Russia. I said to Russia, let us sign a deal that is between US and the Russian government. They said, let us sign a deal. You bring out your nuclear warheads. We will bring our own. And let us destroy the nuclear warheads. Guess what? The Russian leader, not Putin, the Russian leader of that time, Gorbachev, called American scientists. Of course, when you hear American scientists, they are CIA, FBI agents. Brought them, including the American president, brought them to Moscow, showed them all their armaments. And they said, okay, you destroy this number of your warheads. We will go and we'll destroy our own. Do you know what? The Russians destroyed a whole lot of their armaments. Because when it comes to nuclear warhead, Russia is far ahead than the United States. You can Google it. Russia has more nuclear warheads than the United States. So when Russia destroyed a lot of the warheads, 
now waiting for America to do her own. Do you know what the American president told the Russian president? He said, look, we cannot destroy any longer. It's, it's not at my own power. This American president, after he observed Russian destroying, of course, they defund the USSR, def destroying their warhead. A lot of them were destroying Ukraine. This Ukraine you're seeing today, the Ukraine you're seeing, Poland, all these places we are having a whole high concentration of nuclear warheads. Poland, Ukraine, and all the rest of them. Because they were all part of the defunct USSR. If you remember in, 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 in Ukraine, Ukraine had in 1980, in 1980s, I might not remember the actual year, but in the 80s, in Ukraine, there, is, oh, there was a nuclear disaster that happened in a place known as Chernobyl. There was a nuclear leak. So Ukraine had a whole lot of nuclear warheads for the defunct USSR. In Poland, it's also that way. In Czechoslovakia and all the rest of them. So America allowed them to destroy all those things. That's why Zelensky, President Zelensky, will always be telling you that the worst mistake that happened to Ukrainians was for them to lose nuclear warheads. Because if they had if they have nuclear warheads today, Russia will also be extremely careful. Russia would have also been extremely careful in handling Ukrainians because you don't mismanage or mishandle a nuclear possessor. That's what America is. American drunkenness does not get to North Korea or even Iran. You must be extremely careful. So the Lord them to destroy all these warheads and only for the American president to tell the Russian leader that it is the power of the Congress to approve for the destruction of American warheads, not the president. And they were tricked. That was how he deceived the then Russian leader. And why do they want them to decommission? Because the American elites believe that the resources in Russia needs not to be in the hand of the Russians. It must be in the hand of, of the globalists. The globalists should control, just the way they are controlling every resources in the world, but not except countries like North Korea, uh, Iran, uh, to an extent Venezuela, to an extent uh, Russia. But they have influence in other, a lot of places. So they now believe that the resources in Russia, because in Russia you have a high concentration of uranium, which you can use for medical purpose, which is isotope. You, you have jet jet a fuel a1 fuel and all the rest of them for aviation we have it as a we have huge gas reserve you have a large portion for grain russia contributes over 40 percent of global grain consumption what of are you not talking about steel talking about coal Talking about gold, Russia is, is excessively rich when it comes to natural deposits. And this is what the Western elites believe should not be controlled by the Russians. But it's too big for them to control. They believe that they are the perfect people that should control all these things, not the Russian people. So they have tried all their best to weaken Russia. They, dis they pieces Russia in 1991, 1990, 1991. They scattered them, <laughs> balkanized them. And it seems that is not enough. 
they are doing everything to weaken what is left as Russia. Because what is left as Russia is still big. But to them, it must be weakened. So when they now came up with the idea that because major Russian source of income comes from gas, gas exportation, Russia controls over 40% of global uh, gas consumption. Yes, Russia gas uh, gas water contribution is unmatchable. Then that's okay. Let us attack the major source of income of Russian people. And because the European market consumes and depends on Russian gas. See, we are taking time to tell you this story, not to bore you. But we want to let you know how Nigeria started a trouble that will consume her. You see, because somebody who he trusts Nigerian writers, especially the mainstream journalists, they will start telling that Russia wants to bully Nigeria. That is what you see, what we, what you will see from next week. They will start telling you how Russia wants to bully Nigeria, or how Russia wants to use not. In fact, the president have technically said that that the protesters have motive to divide Nigeria. The president said it in, pre in the press statement that there are people who want to divide the country. He's indirectly sending a signal. But let me tell you, we are taking time to t give you a historical punitivities and narrative so that you don't be stupid. When somebody starts telling you that Russia is bullying Nigeria, Russia wants to make a trouble, these are what Western media will be projecting from next week. They are not comfortable with what they saw in North. And they are now cooking and preparing the best propaganda to serve you. Thanks heaven. We started educating ourselves earlier before now on this matter. Because that was what they will start telling you. From next week, this week we have just entered. They will start telling you how Russia is funding this, funding IPOP, funding the northern this trying to make a problem, this, 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 this. You have to understand this. That's why we took time earlier to tell you, see where Nigeria is looking for trouble, but she will start crying that somebody else is looking for a trouble. Remember, you need to share this program. Very, very important so that everyone can understand it. Everyone needs to know it. So when the Western elites decided to attack Russian revenue, do you know, no country chose with economic sabotage. Absolutely, there is no country. If there is anything a country can tolerate from you, apart from violation of territorial integrity, another thing no country Toroless, extremely, is economic sabotage, economic attack. Till tomorrow, America cannot forgive Roy, uh, China because a lot of Chinese technology are copied in intellectual properties of the United States. And Americans cannot forgive Chinese for that. Because what Chinese do is that they attack American technology database still their designs all the designs American scientists have designed for themselves the, 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 the Chinese cyber warriors will attack those databases and steal it and start molding it in China and America have even warned them severally but you can't stop it and America does not take it like because it's an economic sabotage. So, uh, so when these people decided to attack Russia economically, they started looking for a country because they planned the conspiracy, the geomapping. They now did their chatting and said the best way is to destroy Russia's presence in Europe. If we deny the Russian gas access to Europe, 
who have succeeded in destroying Russia revenue. And how do we deny Russia access to European gas market? We have to provide an alternative. And they come up with the idea now. The only three options or three sources of providing alternative to gas in Europe is US, Algeria, or Nigeria. For US, is not market viability, viable, I mean to say, is not economically viable because if you are to be bringing US gas in European market as a way of pushing Russia out, it will be so expensive because to, for you to ship across, across the Pacific, U.S. gas to Europe. When you cost the production cost, put the logistical cost, that is the money used in transporting it, European nations cannot afford it. It will be really expensive for them. If you check all the production and the logistic cost, that means them buying from Russia is cheaper for them because Russia does not ship through the ship she does she enters the european market through the pipe she lays from russia to europe you know through the agency known as gazprom that is the national just the way you have an npc in nigeria their own is gazprom so they now analyze that if we are to push russia's out russian gas out and bring the us it will be expensive for them to produce. And because it is expensive, it's going to affect price of products. Because the man producing will also put cost, production cost, which the gas consumption is part of it, to the finished product. So it was not viable. They now went to the Algerians and said to the Algerian people, could you please lay pipe to Europe? And Algeria said, no, we can't do it because we are allied to Russia. We can't do it. How can we backstab Russia? We can't do it. As a matter of fact, the Algerians said, even though they will do it, because of what French did to their people during the colonial times, because of the role of French colonial, uh, colonial government, because of what French government did to the audience, that they will never, never do anything that will benefit the French people. They, they rejected that offer. Then these people now ran to Nigeria and said, please could you accept laying part from Nigeria to Europe? And plus Nigerian leaders, they, they don't have a historical perspective. Majority of them don't even know geopolitics. What they know is that bribe them, they will send anything for you. They are not conscious. And that's the problem of Nigeria because you have leaders who are not informed. You have people only like Ababi who say, go and protest and will be eating. Their understanding of life is just eating. Feed feed and nothing more nothing less so when they now approach nigeria what then now happened was the nigerian government accepted the offer and said don't worry you see without making analysis without understanding the implication of what they are doing. Nigerian leaders never care because the majority of them do not understand geopolitics. They don't understand diplomacy. They don't understand international politics. What they know is that, are you bringing the money in Ghana must go? Which of the currency, dollar, I will do it. So when these guys approach Nigeria, Nigeria accepted, Nigerian politicians accepted. 
and the Russians told them, Russian, Russian government approached them and said, you can't do this to us. You cannot. You cannot come and start contending with us in the European market. Ordinarily, an average Nigerian scholar will tell you it's all about interest. If it's all about interest, that means your interest is to knock out Russia from the European market. Russia also should have interest to sabotage you. If it's a game of interest, so be it. The Russians approached them and said to them, why doing this thing to us? There are areas we can walk. You can still move your gas within the Sahel. You can even allow the Europeans to come and buy and ship it. But the idea of laying pipe is going to be a blow to us. Okay, let's have a deal. Let's have a window. We are going to develop your electricity sector. We are going to develop your steel industry. Most of you do not understand. If Nigeria has steel industry, a viable steel industry, Nigeria can produce a car on a cheap cost. Because everything comes from steel. Nigeria can run a viable military industrial complex. Nigeria has no business going to buy bullets from South Africa, from you know Pakistan. As I speak to you, Zimbabwe is now producing bullets because the Russians have helped them to develop steel. So the Russians said to them, okay, we are going to develop your energy sector. We are going to help you to develop your steel. But the Nigerian politicians said, all these things you are talking, did you bring money? They said, no, how can we start giving you money? We are talking about developing something that will be beneficial to you. Create a job. Drop your high job index. Do you know what? The politicians told them, you are talking rubbish. The only language we hear is the language of load it in Ghana, must go dollar, give us that answer. The Russians said, okay. Is that what you want? We don't have any money to splash on you. Because what the Russians we are avoiding is that if you start paying government A, by the time that government ends, you start bribing government B. Any government that comes, you have to keep paying. And they can't do such. The West are comfortable with that because they understand the Nigerian political landscape. They understand that what Nigerian leaders want is just give them money, nothing more. And the West is happy doing that. That's why anywhere the Western companies are operating, they splash money like it. Tomorrow is not going to come. For instance, if you go to Niger Delta, you see them, they dash one fashion, one court group money, dash another uh, group, and encourage them to keep on worrying themselves. They fund these people, fund these people, and ask them, keep on destroying yourselves. Then they now use army and be moving and be taking. But they make sure that these people cannot be united to fight a common cause. So, the answer said to Russia, go to hell. We don't want all those nonsense you're talking. We don't need a stable electricity. We don't need a developed steel. Just have it yourself. If you don't have money to put on the table, you get out. We don't want it. The Russians left and said, okay, let us activate plan B. Let us activate plan B. Their plan B would have been to support indigenous uprising in these places that are producing this gas, especially in Niger Delta, in the session of Imo, Abia, Anambra, and all the rest of the world, where we have gas concentration. That would have been their plan B. But why they could not do that is because they have also taken time to look at 
those who call themselves activists in this region, activists from this region, they discover they are as stupid as those they met at leadership level. Russia looked at them and said, oh, we thought these guys, the youth, the youth group, the youth activists we are seeing in Niger Delta, we are seeing in all these places, we thought they are even organized, would have supported them, would have enhanced them to demand for the control of their resources. But it's a difficult thing because <laughs> they are still as worst as the leaders at national level. You can just imagine, can't somebody like Asari Dukubo got his money and went to, to Kotonu and built the university. He never cared about what is happening in Niger Delta. So the Russians saw them and said, no, no, these ones are also cloud chasers. They are just as worst as those we are seeing at up there. Very corrupt and dirty. Extremely disgruntled elements. And that's okay. Our plan B cannot work. Let us go to plan C. And what is the plan C? Let us see how to disrupt the flow of this gas down to Algeria. Let us see how it's going to work. Let's see how to disrupt it. And it was a very difficult task. It was really a very difficult task because in Nigeria as at that time the West made sure that they build a heavy military presence in Niger, in Mali, in Burkina Faso to make sure they monitor this project uninterruptedly. If you come to Niger for instance you have European forces, you have French forces, you have German forces you have American forces. In our gardens, within the Sahara, they make sure they flooded those places with the drones to make sure that that pipe will be on heavy surveillance. There won't be any form of sabotage. So that even though Russia decide to use sabotage, it will be difficult. Because the eyes of the West was to be critically focused. Their cameras, their satellites, and all were to protect that project, the transportation of Nigerian gas to Europe in order to weaken Russia. You now understand what I'm saying? So, apart from building up military presence, another thing the West was doing was to recruit, they started recruiting different factions of terrorists or militias. To make sure none of them or any fashion start thinking of sabotaging the pipe. They were paying the terrorists, funding them. The terrorists in Sahel, heavily funding them. CIA was running operation. FBI was running operation. MI6 was running operation. Mossad also had interest. They were keenly flooding the Sahel with different fashions of terrorists, different groups to measure that both the state actors and non-state actors fully protect the transportation of Nigerian gas. Remember, the Nigerian gas was highly weaponized gas against Russian interest. So it was a very confusing and difficult situation for Russia to manage. And those in Abuja were happy doing it. They were bragging and boasting about it. Making all manners of utterances that nothing will happen. Because the West have assured them the project is going to, you know, the project was going to end well. Russia can only rant. But Definitely, we're going to deliver. So, and they were busy, you know, bragging and all this. 
especially where his government was on the peak of his voice, bragging, bragging, bragging about the project, speeding it up, speeding it up, where he wanted it to happen before the end of his regime. And Russia move on plan C or plan three. Because plan A failed, plan B failed, plan C. And what is plan C? To support the removal of pro Western elements in Sahel. And they secretly worked on that. Worked on that. Russian Secret Service was reaching out to those who are closer to the president of some of these Sahel guys. They were mapping out the best way to do it. But before that, they first of all, make sure they have a proximity to work. Because proximity is very, very important in everything you're doing. In my own dialect, we used to say, Ana no te te loko. In my own clan. What that means is that you don't stay far and start kicking somebody with your leg. You must come closer. So before Russia achieved that, because why am I saying this? Most of us, most of us do not even understand anything. Hey, why why will Russia help us? Why can't Russia help us? Does Russia have a proximity to you? That's the question you should ask yourself. Because we always say it, people need to study, people need to, you need to research, you need to learn. Including, especially us who call ourselves media warriors. You need to research, you need to investigate, you need to study. So that you can be filled and have a good empty. Not when you are empty, you, you hope to fill any, any other person. No, you must fill yourself to the brim. Then you come and pour it out. Not when you're empty, you're not researching. Hey, why can't Russia help? What? Does Russia have a proximity to you? Before Russia achieved what she achieved in Niger, in Burkina Faso, in Chad, in Mali, she first of all established a footprint in a place known as Central African Republic. Yes. She first of all registered herself in CAR, Central African Republic. Established herself there, put up her machineries, which are Wagner, Wagner Group. Start monitoring the region. It took them years to monitor the region, understand what was happening, spy everywhere. Then they struck. And today, they own that region. They absolutely own that region. But before they own the region, they made what we call strategic position. It's very, very important. What you're seeing in North today cannot happen except, first of all, Russia enters Niger. Russia cannot operate from Moscow to operate in Nigeria. It can never happen. She does not have that tentacle. No country has it, not even US. Not even U.S. That's why, even as big as U.S., apart from relying on physical military bases, they also have what we call aircraft carriers. Even when they are in your land, presently, they also station some aircraft carriers. These are big ships that houses jets and the war, fight, war fighters. They also have aircraft carriers proximity close to you because there is no success without proximity we that study international politics what we study is your proximity it's not you can be in Moscow and be talking nobody cares it's, going, it's not going to have effect ask yourself a question why do countries panic not when a superpower is talking to them from a distance. Rather, when that superpower is now within their neighborhood. That is when you take them serious. Because 
proximity in food registry is a sign of seriousness. We don't calculate what is said, what it is, is baseless. Because proximity is everything. Why did Niger ask America, EU, France, and Germany to leave? Because they don't want that proximity. If they are in the land, they can destabilize their country anytime. Why is Tinubu running to address? Normally, Tinubu would have just sit back and watch you people. Because in the neighborhood, there is a country that is not in good relationship with Nigeria and the neighborhood controlling those neighbors. So he must wake up and do it fast. In fact, did he start making the press statement when Russia flag started flying all over the place? Then I asked him, Mr. President, you have to do something. Formerly, he never cared, and nothing would have happened. But when he now started seeing flags everywhere, he woke up from slumber. And even in that dress, he made you to know that people have a political motive to divide a country. He's no longer making reference to IPUB for those of you who do not understand. He's now making strong reference of what is happening in the North. Because intelligence is pointing to him that, hey, what is coming from that angle? You cannot imagine it. In fact, he's not trying to see if he can build a United South. That was why he's now warning people who are threatening in the world that he's not going to tolerate it. In the speech he made, he condemned the threat against in the world because paraventure what is happening in the North escalates. Nigeria can be divided on the north and south level. But what he's trying to do is let us have a united south. And he sent a signal to them that we understand what you're doing. You must understand all these things. So what Russia did was to disrupt the activities uh, you know, the activity, disrupt the activity in the Sahel region and took over. Now, the problem is that, the problem we have now is that Russia have come to the neighborhood. There's nothing you can do about it. It's difficult to boot her away. Now, let me tell you why it's so difficult to boot her away. You see, the smartest thing Russia did in Sahel was to ask this country, these three countries to form a confederation. That is the AES states. Niger, Chad, and Burkina Faso. He asked them to, Russia asked them to form a one country confederation. Which means they now have singular military, singular economy singular a space and why did russia encourage for that russia knew that these countries cannot survive in their smaller units when you have a country that has a lot of western footprint as their neighbor which is nigeria in fact what saved niger was the russians if not, Nigeria would have entered Niger, captured Niger. It doesn't take Nigeria anything to go back to Niger under ECOWAS, under the umbrella of ECOWAS. Shouldn't have taken them anything. It shouldn't have. But when Nigeria and ECOWAS realized that Wagner group quickly moving to uh, Niger and Niger 
started receiving a lot of modern weapons from Russia. And Nigeria also realized that those who are shouting Ogago within your back, like uh, Benin Republic, like Togo, like Ghana, that truly they are not behind Nigeria. They are very unstable. Nigeria has to review that move in order not to get trapped. Because it's a game. If you're playing, you use your head. So, Russia asked them to build the Confederation. Now, the issue that is facing Nigeria currently is this. In international politics, you don't start a war and stop halfway. You don't start beating a man and beating halfway. No country does that. If a country has identified you as an enemy, she fights until the point she knows that you can't have the power again to challenge her. That is what international politics is all about. Countries cannot destroy you halfway. They weaken you to a point they know you cannot have what it takes to challenge their interest again. And that's exactly what is playing out in Nigeria. Russia does not want her allies in Sahel to come. And the Russians know that in as much as Nigeria exists, this country's future are in threat. And what is Russia doing? Russia is doing everything within her power to either reduce Nigeria to a level in terms of size so that she cannot challenge her allies within Sahel. That is one. Russia also wants to make sure that the resources that Nigeria brags with, which is in the hands of the Western elites, that their resources can be returned back through the indigenous owners and make friendship with those owners. And how can that happen? That can only happen if Nigeria is disintegrated and the Biafran people control their resources. Because the more Nigeria exists, the more the Western elites control the resources. And the more they will polarize their resources against Russian interests. And Russia does not want that. So, all these things were happening. Nigeria government never woke up. They never woke up. The politicians were all sleeping. They were sleeping because they believe nothing they happen. So nothing they happen until the last event that struck. And what is that last event? They began to see that, you know, that <coughs> Russia seemed to be infiltrating the north. Then that was when they, when they woke up. Now, let's see, let's look at the uh, Punch. This is Punch publication today. Let's see what it says. It said, Hashi protest. Former envoys, ex military officer, former envoys. Former envoys here means former ambassadors, former diplomats. These are career diplomats, career ambassadors. These are people who have spent all their lives talking about international politics, talking about international relations, talking about diplomatic engagements. Now look at, these guys were quiet all this day, all, all this while. They never said anything. 
immediately Russian flag was who you know used in the protest or not. He said, former envoy. S military officers wore it as demonstrators wave Russian flag. They began to panic. I read the news. You know, you find the news in the other pages. I read the news and I listened to what most of them were saying. Funny enough, these are career, retired career diplomats. Do you know most of them were advising the Nigerian government to summon for ECOWAS emergency meeting so that ECOWAS can raise a minute ahead of time in case Russia or Niger decide to enter that the minute the ECOWAS forces can repair them. This is what this is what supposedly ex military officers, career diplomats, were advising Tunubu. <laughs> Do you see? Do you see how destructive these guys are? They did not advise on diplomatic engagement. Of course, as a matter of fact, most of them are Western spies, so they think like those who are putting money in their pockets. They cannot think contrary to those who are paying them, who are bankrolling them. Former envoys, we are advising that the Nigerian government should call for <laughs> a COAS meeting, emergency COAS meeting, and let them build military forces that will wage war. You, you, you see the level of thinking of some of these guys who call themselves leader. Do they think they are talking about waging war if there should be a war with a country like, uh, which one is the least, least country? Okay, a country like Vatican. A country like Vatican that at least doesn't have a strong budget on defense when it comes to defense. We are talking about a country that America is careful with. We are talking about a country that NATO, that is dealing with NATO, with her electro electronic warfare advancement. This is a country we are talking We are talking about a country that can mount equipment in Niger, Nebo and Nigeria. No Nigerian fly can be on the airspace. They will electronically bring it down. This is the country we are talking. And an SM Voy, an S military officers advance advising for someone <laughs> of a coas a coas <laughs> I said it there. It can only be God. That is making these people to to lack bread. I read that and I was imagining. Did they actually inform them about the country in question? We are talking about the country that is humiliating NATO in Ukraine. A country that has S five hundred surface to you know uh, Emisa. This is the country we are talking about. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. I, 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 I read it and I laugh. I read that. I read that too. I, read that too I, 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 was, I was. In fact, I read it up to five times to see if my eye depend me or waiting. <laughs> I read it up to five times on that session where. One of them was advising that Nigeria should quickly summon for echo. I wish I had a second gadget. I would have read it out. Where somebody is advising. Without even the person realizing that with what Niger inherited from America. You know, when America was leaving Niger, 
America left a lot of her equipments. That is America for you. America is expert in, in wasting and uh, giving out to their enemy. Afghanistan military is really doing well today. The Taliban are having a good gear, military gears and military equipment because of what America abandoned. And this is diplomats failed to understand that Niger military was so advanced because America exposed them on modern technology because of American presence in Agadez and other places. Niger military inherited a whole lot of modern weapons while the Western countries were living. They didn't evacuate everything. So Niger only military is so advanced when it comes to operational uh, operations in terms of managing modern weapons when it comes to drones most of them we are expert and somebody woke up and started advising now funny enough uh, Vanga uh, Punch went to you know, Punch went to interview the uh, Russian ambassador and said to them, do you see what is happening now? What is your opinion? The man said he has not seen it. That is to tell you that these people have decided to play the politics in a way Nigeria will be more confused. Because the Punch reporter went and asked the Russian ambassador, said, did you see what is happening now? Your opinion have not seen it. Please, can you show me? If you have the picture, kindly show me. Kindly show me. You now understand what we're saying. So, we must understand the time and the season we have. Because there is no country that survives when two powers start contending that's the soul of that country. No country has survived it. I will tell you what mean we are. Old India never survived it. When Pakistan that was supported by the East and India on the other hand they never survived. They, they split it. Koreans never survived it. I can still name and keep on naming. No country has ever survived it. And for your information, Nigeria had a very good opportunity to win the Bia France in the war because it was not ideological conflict. Both Russia, both the West, all supported for United Nigeria as at that time. So Bia France were struggling to get allies. But in this time, the situation has changed and let me tell you before the end of this program this will be okay south sudan yes south sudan and sudan that is also what split down. thank you i think we have a good good international teachers here teachers of international politics thank you Obiendo. so that is what it is now let me tell you this the problem nigeria has currently is that Britain that is supposed to have helped her is facing a civil war. Most of you do not know because the media, the Western media refuse you to know about it. There is ongoing war. Those of you who are watching me in UK can attest to that. There is ongoing war between Arab migrants and the English people. They are fighting, destroying UK now. In fact, the UK government has come up and said, Russia is the one funding the civil war. Most of you do not know this. The UK government has come out and said Russia is the one funding the war. And some persons have even come up and said UK might not survive it. Like if you watch this, 
This is uh, Elon Musk. He says civil war is inevitable in UK. Says Elon Musk. Not just Elon Musk. A lot of people have said it. UK is facing a severe civil war that is likely to crumble the country, destroy the country. And they have come up and said Russia is the one funding it. So you now understand the future of Nigeria and Nigeria is in a very big mess. Because if UK is stable and Nigeria is facing a problem, UK can easily intervene and stop the problem. If Nigeria is facing disturbances, Nigeria could as well intervene and arrest, help them and arrest the situation. But the problem is, UK is facing a severe destability. You understand what it is? You understand what it is? And the danger of it all now is that most of you have never seen comment coming after the press statement of uh, Emil Ocon. Most of you have not. A lot of people are commenting, including article, that what he said is not what was expected. Yes. Contradictions upon contradictions. People are beginning to say, no, what he said is not what was expected of him. You will now understand what we are talking about. You now understand what we are talking about. So, this week might also be tensed because already people, especially those of them in the north, are beginning to say no. Are beginning to say no. What you said is not what we expected. So we, we, they are indirectly encouraging the people to keep on protesting. So that is what it is. So we must understand the time we are. Very, very important. So I, I, I think we have spent, let me see, how many hours we've done. Okay. No, no, we have done extensive time. This is an hour and 30 minutes. So we we'll come to the end of today's program and uh, all just to remain resolute. We'll also be trying our best to be coming, to be interpreting developments and uh, as they have. What we need now is to be put our ears critically to the leadership. You know, we have leadership that is doing everything within their power to make up the best of all the developments. So we must put our ears down to them because every move they are making is born out of analysis and resounding intelligence gathering. So we, we have to, so that we can be preserved as a nation. So from here I want to say thank you. Do enjoy your new week. I'm okay, keep on blessing us.